Hello, everyone, and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host, Andy Hoy, publisher and CEO of Metro Magazine. We have a really great show for you today. We're going to be talking um, about two virtual events coming up. One, the Omaha Summer Arts Festival, and two, Habitat for Humanities Brouhaha. And then also we'll be talking to Kids Can Community Center. So don't go away. We will be right back. Well, I am here with Robert Patterson. He is the Chief Executive Office of Kids Can Community Center. Robert, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, let's first talk a little bit about Kids Can Community Center. Um, who do you serve? And um, you've, you, you have quite a history. Absolutely. We were founded in 1908 as Social Settlement Association. So uh, uh, Omaha long timers will kind of know us as that, but in 2009 we changed our name to Kids Can to better reflect what we do. Um, and the theme all throughout, you know, the past century has been uh, children and families. Uh, but right now we specifically uh, focus on uh, serve children 18 months up to 13 years old. And we okay. do that at our main site at 49th and Crew uh, Q. Uh, but we've also expanded the past few years to doing school-based sites, uh, including four uh, North Omaha schools that we serve now. So we're now kind of in uh, both uh, North and South Omaha. Yeah, and you started like out as social settlement, and you, yeah, and you've been there. I mean, you've been there for quite a while. I have. I've been the CEO almost ten years. Ten years this fall, uh, but I've actually been with the organization over twenty-one years. So, wow. Uh, that, that's why you see all the the, the gray in my my okay. mustache here. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about your mustache right before yeah. you know, when we get done with the interview because I want to talk to you about that. Um, but you've really seen how things have progressed and grown over the years and changed over the years. And also, I'm sure the needs have changed as well. Absolutely. So it's it's interesting. I, I love, we have some good, uh, when I have time to kind of dig through our historical documents, it's always fun for me to see. Um, and I was, I was always realizing that this organization has lived through uh, world wars, depressions, and pandemics already. Um, so this organization has survived. And so that's kind of, I took some some leadership cues as we, I was making decisions lately about you know what my predecessor uh, would have done as well. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about COVID nineteen. I mean, because you know we're 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 about we're a little over two months into this, mm -hmm. and how has this impacted? Kind of walk me through what what decisions and what was going on when when this first hit you. Absolutely. So uh, it was about mid March, you know, when it really hit Omaha, um, and we closed. We closed for uh, a solid two weeks. To kind of assess and figure out what we needed to do and I, I had some honestly sleepless nights trying to make that that right decision and as a leader uh, you don't always have that clarity uh, to make those decisions it's it's yeah. not always that simple um, but we did decide to reopen uh, and but under old new parameters so uh, at that time it was less than 10 kids per room you know switching between rooms uh, I turned off the water fountains so each kid had their own water bottle everything we could do to kind of mitigate uh, uh, any of the, the disease, disease spread. But uh, we also realized that we needed to step up and do our part um, in providing some programming uh, for our community. So what are you seeing your biggest needs right now um, in the community related to COVID-19? Uh, well, financially, for sure. So we, our nonprofit typically depends a lot on earned revenue, and, and we still do. Um, usually that's a good thing for nonprofits. Uh, when this happens, uh, when programs are stopped or diminished, uh, we're losing about $12,000 in earned revenue a week. Uh, while our expenses uh, almost stay the same, or sometimes are a little bit more, that right now we're paying direct care staff time and a half because we know they're on the front lines. And so I wanted to make sure that they were compensated fairly. Um, of course, more cleaning and so forth. But um, so, uh, Financial support, of course, is always helpful. Um, and then I'm also thinking about, you know, we have on-site mentoring and we're kind of transitioning to virtual mentoring. Um, now more than ever, kids need that connection and engagement. So we're always kind of looking for, for mentor volunteers as well. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're transitioning to that? or it Yeah, at least temporarily. Um, okay. So we know um, we've had on-site mentoring and we didn't want to lose that connection, but, um, but we also, we don't want necessarily uh, giving over personal information, have them texting each other. We kind of want to make sure that we're doing it in a safe way. Uh, as and to, you know. Are you looking for additional mentors? I mean, that's a need that you have all year round, correct? 
Absolutely. So yeah, we're always looking for mentors because as important as our programs are, we know that one-on-one -on -one, uh, connection with adults always makes a difference. And whether kids can or big brothers, big sisters or uh, whatever fits you best, that mentoring is a huge need in our community. Yeah. Um, so let's talk, we talked about kind of the changes you did initially um, and looking forward, um, are there other changes? I mean, in addition to the virtual mentoring, I mean, looking you know over the next few few months and and we don't even have to go out a, a year because who knows but over the next few months yeah I, we can barely look ahead a month and try to kind of have the magic ball to kind of see what's yeah. going on but but we are getting ready um we're gonna um uh in the next month we're gonna uh, be uh, have a whole new website called stemsmartacademy.org so okay. STEM smart has been part of us everybody's familiar with stem but the smart part is strength meaning inner and outer music art reading and tutoring so we'll have a lot of videos and activities we've, uh, we've been doing a lot of online videos already so uh, every morning we have either a new activity or a resource every afternoon we have mindful moments um, but we have also been handing out activity bags and cleaning supplies so for those families that we can't uh, directly serve right now we want to make sure all their needs are met and those kids are getting engaged yeah so so that website you're launching you said in about a month correct yeah okay All right. fingers that's crossed exciting. yeah what F fingers crossed yeah okay yeah okay but th but that's exciting um that that's exciting news so your greatest needs i mean we talked about this a little bit but again you said financially mm -hmm. um and also mentors i mean anything else that that the community can do or, or maybe people can't give financially can they donate something Oh, absolutely. So we, we're part of Share Omaha, which you're familiar with. So we have our wish list on there uh, where people can donate. And we're, can, we're trying to keep that updated as well because it used to be more the, pro, uh, the materials that we need, but we're also giving out a lot of uh, different uh, activity bags and sure. things for our kids. So we are, uh, we've had great support so far, but we just have to keep that up for, for our families, especially over the, the summer months are difficult enough for families. Yeah. Right now, there is a child care. Uh, 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 desert because there's not a whole lot of child care is open. Uh, yeah. a lot of our peers are not open, so a lot of families are struggling with what to do with their kids over the summer. Absolutely. Um, let's. So the website. Uh, so our website is kidscan.org. Okay. And if you uh, hold off a couple months, uh, uh, stemsmartacademy.org will be opening soon. I'll be sure to have you back um, as that gets launched and, and, and we can talk more about that. So in the last like 30 seconds, um, tell us about your mustache. Oh, so yeah, I'm not, I usually get full goatee person, but uh, mustaches for kids uh, selected kids can as one of eight this year. Yes, so that's so exciting. I'm, we were excited about that. Um, but, and uh, so we're one of eight organizations and so um, I'm participating um, I've not grown a mustache uh, uh, in the past because I, I think I look exactly like my dad, and I do. Uh, I have more gray and white in my mustache than he does, so I, I don't know what that says about me. But uh, but we're really excited about that, and we're in the, the final push uh, this week. So uh, yeah, we want to thank all of our supporters and mustache growers for helping us. Yeah, I'm so glad because um, this is the first year they actually selected eight charities versus one, so that's exciting. Well, Robert, I want to thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. And again, I'm going to connect with you in, in a couple months. Likewise. Good to see you, even virtually. Uh, it's okay. All righty. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, welcome everybody. I'm here with TJ Isaacs. He is the Chief Development Officer for Habitat for Humanity of Omaha. TJ, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. We greatly appreciate the time to be able to speak about Habitat, especially during these uncertain times. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. So let's just first, let's just talk about Habitat for Humanity, um, what you do, who you serve. Yeah, for sure. So Habitat for Humanity Omaha has been around since 1984. And we've actually have served over 1,800 families in that time frame. And, you know, we, we are focusing on low to moderate income families. And you'll know most of our, our families have been uh, over the years in North and South Omaha. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we do serve the, you know, Douglas County and the city of Omaha. And so families have, you know, opportunities to, um, you know, purchase homes through us. And what we like to say is it's not a handout, it's a hand up. And so we are helping folks um, have an opportunity to, to have that dream of being a, a homeowner. And so what that means is they don't, we don't just, you know, give somebody a home for free. They do have to come in and work with us. They have to put in up to 350 hours of community service, either through helping build their home or somebody else's home or one of our restores. And also they go through financial literacy and different things like that where they will become eligible. And then it's a low down payment for them up to $500 for a down payment. And then we give them a, you know, a 20 to 30 year loan. So it becomes very affordable uh, and a great opportunity for folks. Yeah. to have that pride of home ownership. Yeah. So let's just talk a little bit, because um, you've got a virtual event coming up, and I want to really take some time to talk about that. But let's just first, just in general, COVID-19, how yeah. has it impacted um, Habitat for Humanity? Yeah, it, it's definitely affected us just like it has other nonprofits across the city and across the country. We've been very fortunate. We've had a great leadership team. Uh, Amanda Brewer, our CEO, has been around for a couple of years. I give her a hard time but about 20 years oh, yeah. and we've been conservative over the years. And, and luckily we, we have not laid off any of our employees. So we're, we have been in that aspect, things have been really, you know, have gone well, but the side where COVID has affected us is that um, our construction has taken a little bit of a step back on what sure. we're building homes this year. In 2019, we built over 50 homes. This year will probably be closer to 40. And so that right. does affect uh, because we had to pull our construction teams off off the, the builds for a little while. Now they are back up and running, but following proper social distancing, there's two, you know, uh, two workers per site, things like that. And, um, but another big uh, missed opportunity, you know, a challenge that we had with COVID was our restores. We have two restores. Yes. Folks can donate uh, household items and then we resale and which comes back to help us build our homes. And those have been closed uh, for the last almost two months. And then just within the last two weeks, we have opened up the e-store. So you can go online to habitat.org and find the restore tab. And you can go on and see everything is for sale. And you can still purchase online and schedule times to come pick those up. And we're hoping here in the next few weeks that we'll open the restores uh, to the public again. But it's definitely been a challenge for us. And sure. we're all working from home. And that's, you know, and uh, we're just adjusting. But you know, we've been very fortunate uh, during these times. Our donors have also stepped up to help us in these times. So we've been very lucky. And also, I mean, it probably, ha I mean, obviously impacting your, your ability to work on homes and the volunteers that, that you know, that kind of just comes to a, a halt for a while. Yeah. You're exactly right. You know, we're very blessed. We've had over, I think last year we had over 13,000 volunteers throughout the year help us. Um, and that's been shut off. And we're not ready yet to bring volunteers back into the field until, you know, um, we're following guidelines. Absolutely. And companies we work with, First National Bank, and a lot of these companies that bring out many volunteers, and they're not ready to bring, let volunteers come out also. So that's going to be uh, a big adjustment for us moving forward. But once, once we're opened up and ready to go, yeah. we can't wait for volunteers back on sites. Yeah, and I'm sure they can't wait to, to, to be back and, and doing yeah. that, so... We have a lot of phone calls asking when they can come back. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, let's talk a little bit. So, like I said, you've got a virtual event, Brouhaha, which is how many years? 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. I remember when, I remember when this kicked off 14 years ago. Um, uh, so, this year you've decided to do a virtual event. And it's actually early because typically this is in September, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. We were looking at September. Uh, it would have been September 10th. And... When it came down to making the decision to essentially cancel the in-person event, um, our committee, which has been great, we're, we have a great volunteer committee, they said, you know what, here's an opportunity. We don't feel comfortable exactly being in public, and we don't know what it's going to look like in September. The restaurants and brewers that we that come to, that are partnered with this event, let's help them. How can we come to, together and help them and support Habitat at the same time? Um, so we came up with an idea that we will do a virtual event and really it's, it's purchasing tickets. Okay. So you can go on to habitat.org backslash brouhaha and you can go in and purchase a ticket with one of our selected vendors. And for $50, 
um, you can buy a ticket. $25, you can choose a vendor, which you will receive a gift card from, that you can then go spend with that restaurant or brewer. And then the other $25 will go to Habitat. And there's no limit. You can buy as many as you would like. And we I thought that, that. Was a, yeah, we just thought it was a great idea to give back to the vendors and to the, you know, our partners. Yeah. And and they've been so excited. So that's, you can start purchasing them now online. Mm -hmm. And then the, we'll have an event that goes June 13th through June 20th where we'll have prizes and different okay. things. And so we're, we're really excited about it. It's not going to be the same uh, this year. We'll come back strong in 2021, but we Absolutely. felt this was a good point this year. Okay. So, and like how many vendors do you have? I mean, and these are restaurants and breweries, correct? Restaurant and breweries. I think right now online you'll find about 13 restaurants and probably nine brewers at okay. this point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to definitely check it out. Um, and then again, so the event, so the virtual event, so how is that going to work? The 13th through the 20th, people go online. I mean, what does that mean? You know, it's going to be, we're going to promote our sponsors, but then each on through our social media platforms, through email, we'll just be sending out different information okay. and how you can support giveaways. It's, you know, we're not going to have an actual program as some, you know, organizations we have, but it's just, uh, I guess it's, it's a little bit more virtual, just no live entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And I just have to, you know, just commend, congratulate. I mean, getting creative and not just letting, you know, what's happening, um, you know, completely take, you know, wipe out your plans for what you had. And this is really, like you said, it's helping restaurants and breweries in the community and also giving back to just such an important organization with everything that you guys do. So um, I'm excited. I'm going to go. Yeah. As soon as we get done, I'm going to go check out that website and Please do. purchase the ticket. And the great thing is, you know, you can't sell out. No, no, no. You can buy as, like I said, you can buy as many as you, you possibly can want. And at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's supporting, it is, it's supporting our vendors, but it's also supporting our families that are in need. And yeah. so hopefully uh, I, I'm hoping we, we raise a lot of money this way for both organizations. Absolutely. Well, um, TJ, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I, I learned more today. So this is great. Um, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. And um, hopefully I will, I will see you soon. So Sounds good. Thank take you. care. Thanks. Well, welcome everybody. I am here with Kylie Benami. She is the operations and marketing manager for the Omaha Summer Arts Festival. Kylie, thank you for joining me. Yes, thanks for having me. So the Summer Arts Festival, um, let's just first talk about it and then we're going to talk about what it is this year. So okay. Sounds and how many years it's been around so and all that good stuff. So the festival uh, was founded in 1975 by Vic Gutman um, and a group of members in the community that were part of the art scene. Um, the festival is a nonprofit arts organization um, and it's made up of uh, a volunteer board of directors. Um, and then a key staff plays a major role um, in putting the festival together. Um, another thing too that we always are so thankful for is all of our volunteers that help us on site at the festival. Without them, we could not put this festival on. Um, so we uh, are really excited for this year because it's going to be a little different <laughs> um, to say the least. Yes, yes. Um, but since we are a nonprofit organization as well, um, our festival has always been um, free admission to get mm -hmm. in. Um, and so that's one, that's one really exciting thing um, is to see all of the different people throughout Omaha that really embrace this event and not just Omaha, but regionally. Um, and we welcome all people. Um, and it's just a really fun event with a lot of different things going on for um, a lot of people. Yeah. And how many people does this typically draw? So this typically draws on an average weekend over three days, 75,000 people. Okay. Yeah, it is very weather dependent, um, but yes, we see a lot, lot a, a large crowd. 
for sure. Okay, so let's talk a little. So Omaha Summer Arts Festival, obviously, we've, we've all got to be doing things differently. So right. um, rather than canceling it, um, what's going on this year? Yes. So, you know, although we are super sad that we're not in the streets um, in North Downtown Omaha, um, we decided that we did not, you know, we didn't want to totally get rid of the festival this year, um, especially for our artists. We have um, 120 artists that um, work so hard. A lot of them um, travel to all these different festivals. Um, and that's their, you know, for a lot of them, that's their source of income for, for the year. And so we wanted to keep an avenue for um, our performers, our artists to still uh, be able to support themselves. Yeah. Um, so there comes virtual OSAF and we're so si excited. It's June 6th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, uh, and people can view it on summerarts.org. Okay, so, okay, so kind of walk me through, um, like, yeah, so you're gonna have artists, you're gonna have musicians, I mean. Right. What can so, I expect? Again. Yeah, so you'll see uh, pretty much a lot of the same aspects of the festival as it was in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just be online. So with our artists, um, I think one thing that people really love about the festival is that you get to be face to face with those artists. And, and you know, a lot of those artists are national artists as well and regional. Um, so artists that some of these community members are and and festival goers don't see yeah. um, so people love the face-to-face -face interaction so this year um, although it won't be face-to-face -face, it will be online so we will be live streaming um, to some of the artist studios as well as some artists have made homemade videos that will show cool. um, just to give them a little glimpse into the, into their lives um, we'll also have an online gallery uh, for browsing and shopping. So that's okay. one thing we really want to stress um, for people to go on. Uh, we got a lot of neat um, artwork this year, um, a lot of different mediums. Um, so it'll, it's just a really fun, and it's all together. So it'll be really convenient yeah. for people to go online um, and support those artists. Yeah. And then will you have like some musicians, um, you know, performing throughout the day? Yeah, so we will have um, eight regional and local musicians performing throughout the day. They'll be live streamed from KPAO Studios. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're super excited. Um, a lot of great performers. Some of them um, include Hector Unchando, um, Stan and the Chain Gang, uh, let's see, Little Joe McCarthy, um, Topher Booth, um, and a handful more. Yeah. So, yes, we will be live streaming. Um, so is the one thing, cause I, I honestly, I love these interviews cause I, I kind of come in here, honestly, not knowing a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. so I think the one thing you're missing kind of the food aspect, right? This year. So that's kind of, so we will have, um, a couple or a few, um, food demos uh, okay. that we will show from some of the, the festival vendors, um, and some recipes. So we will have a small aspect of that, um, okay. within the festival. Um, one other thing too is we will be giving out, um, and this is sponsored by our presenting sponsor, FNBO. We will giving, be giving out at least $2,000 worth of gift cards um, throughout the day for people to shop the artist gallery. Right. FBN, is that First National Bank, MoMA? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what, I, that's what I thought. So for people that, that yeah. Um, so, so people can participate by going by going online and, and watching it like live as it's happening, right? Okay. Right, yep. So um, one other thing I forgot to mention was we will have um, hands-on craft demos too from a lot okay. of our partnering organizations. So that'll be a really fun thing for people and families and kids um, to enjoy. Um, but yes, you just go to summerarts.org. We're also streaming it on um, our Facebook page, so Facebook Live. Um, and then people can also view it um, on TV at uh, Cox Channel 22 or 1022 HD and then CenturyLink Channel 89. Yeah. So yeah. lots of ways to view it. Yeah. And KPA, KPAO, I mean, obviously that's where our, our show um, appears to. Just such a great partner. And I was so excited um, when Mike, the studio manager, said that, that, they were, that, that they were being a part of that this year. So yes. Um, so outside of this event, I mean, how can the community support Omaha Summer Arts Festival? Yes. So 
One big thing is, like I talked about, you know, you're supporting the festival if you're supporting our artists. So yep. we really encourage everyone um, to take a look at the artist gallery. Another way people can support the festival directly is simply go online to summerarts.org and we have a donate button right at the top. Um, another way is uh, this year we are having a limited edition t-shirt and it's the virtual one. Okay. Um, it comes in three colors. People can purchase those online or a website. Um, and a portion of those proceeds will go back to the festival to help, you know, with some of the, the lost revenue that, that we've experienced sure. over the cancellation. Yeah. All right. Well, so exciting happening on Saturday, June 6th. Um, I love people are getting creative and thinking outside the box just to keep everything moving forward, supporting nonprofits, supporting artists. Um, I just, it, it's, it's great to see. So Kylie, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, and we'll see you soon. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you have a, a story, a COVID-19 story that you'd like to share with us, uh, you can email editor at spiritofomaha.com. Also be sure to visit our website, spiritofomaha.com, and also check us out on Facebook, Metro Magazine, all one word. So again, thanks for joining us and we will see you back here next week. Mm -hmm.